This is an interview with Claudia von Cannon. It's October 3rd, 2001. I'm Forrest Larson in the Lewis Music Library. I'm delighted to welcome Claudia von Cannon, who was lecturer in music at MIT from 1974 to 1991. And also joining us is uh, Professor Lowell Lindgren, um, who's still currently teaching here at MIT. I want to thank you all for um, coming for this interview. Today is October 3rd, 2001. We're in the Lewis Music Library. So Claudia, thank you very, very much for, for coming. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your your f family, your father and mother's occupations? Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, and were they born in, in Vienna? I was in, born in Vienna and I'm um, what you call a Viennese died in the wall. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> and ancestor, ancestors way back in Vienna. Uh, my father was uh, the company lawyer of the Danube ship, Ships Company, uh -huh. the Steamships Company. Wow. And my mother was a housewife, yeah. but she uh, had a degree, she was a pianist, and had a degree from the Vienna Conservatory. Wow. And we were just growing up with music. It was, it's, our family was not unique. Everybody almost in Vienna was like uh -huh. this. It is like this. So what kind of performing did your mom do? Um, she was a pianist. Yeah, but did she did she perform? From time to time, yeah, she played chamber music, and of course everybody sang, everybody played. This was a matter of course. Mm -hmm. this wow. Was not not sensational at all. So, what were your parents' names? Your names. The, the first names, yeah. Oh yeah, my my, my father's name was Karl Karl ah. Vinjevic, and uh, my mother's name was Marie Stiebeck. Oh, beautiful! <laughs> wow, um, I'm sure your father. Um, um, must have liked music. Did he play at all or sing? He sang. Yeah. No, he yeah. was too lazy to play. He <laughs> Did he sing like in a church choir or something? <sighs> no. No, we didn't. Uh, someday from time to time, because in Vienna very often uh, you sing in church choirs yeah. because you sing all the masses of Haydn and Mozart on Sunday. Wow. <laughs> wow. How many siblings do you have? I have a sister. Uh -huh. was she, is she a musician? No, no, she's a writer. Yeah, what's her name? Lida. Lida, that's beautiful. Um, is she living in this country? No, uh, uh. no, she lives in Austria. Uh huh. Wow. And you said she's a writer. What kind of writing does she do? Plays. No kidding. Yes. Wow, wow. So there's a literary connection because you're also yeah, a writer uh, no, too. No, 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 no. I, I have been writing a book because of publishing parish. <laughs> I have absolutely no no vocation for that. <laughs> All right. Um, so the the obvious question: What year were you born? Oh, this is my business. <laughs> for, you to, for you to guess, you don't ask this, a lady. Okay. <laughs> born around nineteen forty-five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I understand that you um, were growing up in Vienna during the, the Nazi, oh, yes. Nazi occupation. I was in school. At that yeah. Time. Um, so were you in um, like middle school or high school? Um, Elementary school and middle school. Uh huh. What was musical life like during that time? During the Nazi time? Yeah. <sighs> Undisturbed. Mm -hmm. You know, of course there was there were terrible things and and all kinds of uh, nasty things with uh, Jewish artists, etc. But at the opera, etc., I must say that this was a part that people did not allow all these terrible things to encroach on their music. Wow. There were, there were terrible um, attacks, you know, air attacks. Mm -hmm. But the opera was playing until 45. Mm -hmm. My. And My. Uh, I remember once it was uh, very funny because there was a big, big uh, alarm. You know, there, were, there was a big um, air attack. And Svanholm, the Swedish tenor, who came and sang uh, Radames, and he was so scared of us. I said, Look at the Helen tenor. <laughs> <laughs> My, 
but the Germans occupied Austria in, oh, yeah. in what year? 1938. And so that from 38 to 45, yeah. the Opera House continued. Oh, but absolutely. wasn't it, it bombed or something at one it time? It was bombed in 45. By the... When it, f when it was bombed by, Ameri by the Americans, the unfortunately, <laughs> because they thought it was a train station oh. from the air. <laughs> I didn't know that. Wow. Wow. Can you tell me about your early musical training, how you got started in music? Training? Uh, I was left alone with a keyboard, with a uh -huh, piano. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, my mother always says the best thing is to leave a kid alone with the keyboard. Uh -huh. And then you find things out. Wow. But at some point you, you had a, a piano teacher, right? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. How old were you about when you... Seven. Uh huh. Uh, anything you want to tell me about the teacher? Uh, who, what was the teacher's name? Uh. Annie Heuberg, but she wasn't, she wasn't very, very remarkable. And uh -huh. then my mother died pretty soon, and I was left to myself, more or less. And we had a lot of cousins and uncles and spinster aunts who played for hands. Uh -huh. Everybody had a spinster aunt to play the hand symphonies. For wow, hands. wow. wow. <laughs> it was, that in Vienna, this was a matter of course. This was yeah. not a particular thing. And on Sunday, you went to the Philharmonic. Ah, that's the way it ought to sound, <laughs> you know? Uh -huh. When you, you were kind of stumbling through through the symphony. Yeah. You know, all the Haydn symphonies, they're set for four hands. Right. right. And there's always some bachelor uncle or spinster aunt who plays four hands with the children. Wow, wow. And, uh, that's a great way to get to know the literature, too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Now, you mentioned Haydn. Did you do Mozart, Beethoven, Yes, and oh, I remember the Septet, Beethoven. Yeah. But the symphonies, did you do those? No, four no, no, the no. symphonies were too scared. Too scared. And how about Schubert symphonies, four hands? No, no, we were too scared. Too that scared? Was, that was a little bit too... Okay. I didn't play him. I played Haydn, Mozart, and some of the chamber music. Okay. Well, you've always loved Haydn. Very much. Yeah, yes, and good. Um, as I say, I had a bachelor uncle and a spinster aunt, and uh -huh. they would play with us. Good. Wow. And I, I recommend strongly a spinster aunt in every family <laughs> for the musical, <laughs> musical background. So what were the, the aunt and the, the uncle's names? These, uh. My aunt was called Henriette, my uncle was called Otto. Uh -huh. But this is, is this so relevant? Uh, <laughs> sure, it's fun, fun to put names to these, these, um, these figures from the past. Yeah. Um, so by the time you got to, to high school, was, at, at what point did you st start studying the piano seriously? Oh, when I was 10, something like this. Mm -hmm. And all, all our classmates knew more or less to, knew their way around on the keyboard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then of course came the opera. That means standing only. Yeah. Three, four, five, five times a week. <laughs> wow. And of course, you were also singing. Um, yeah, all the time, and we so. were singing in the in the choir and so. But the real singing came far later when I was with the uh, with Ferdinand Grossman. Uh -huh. That was serious. Yeah. Um, so, at at what point in your childhood did you think of a musical career, or was this just something that came naturally to you? Came naturally. Yeah came naturally. And uh, I always wanted to be an opera singer, but that was impossible because I have a voice that is not reliable. Uh -huh. That means one day sounds fantastic. Next day, don't get anything out. Mm. Are you a soprano? Yeah. Yeah. But, um, and so, of course, I could sing with Grossman. I could sing in the, in the chamber ensemble, but you could never build a career on such an unreliable voice. That's impossible. Uh -huh. But um, I have sung Ferdinand Grossman. I don't know if he is a... Um, He's a household word. Is he a household word? For, for those of us who knew his for recording, those, sure. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, he's, he was just my master and mentor and everything. And, um, from age 16, 17, 18? From age, from age 16. 16, no. yeah. yeah. And ever since, until he died. And you traveled with his... Yes, I traveled with his, uh, with his choir, his, yeah. which oh. is the Vienna Academy uh, Chamber Choir. Yeah. You have rec recordings from us. Oh, really? Oh, sure. to, to, yes. Wow. Oh, wow. So where did, you t where did you go on tour with them? 
Italy, France, Switzerland. Mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't make the American tour because it was a little bit too late. <laughs> but um, I would have done the American tour, but then I got married. So and what uh, what music did this this choir do? What was their specialty or things they particularly liked? Oh, from do? from Josquin to Penderecki. No kidding. Oh sure. Wow. 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 And what we know, we know we know from him. He told us all. Mm -hmm. And he said when he started the choir, he put on the blackboard instrumentalists preferred. <laughs> because he said, I can make you a voice. I cannot make you ears. I cannot make you an intelligence. Uh. And <laughs> so that we, everybody knew how to play an instrument. Good. And I, um, I was not only, I was not in the piano, I was in the harpsichord, but it's all the argument. Did you give um, keyboard recitals when you were a child? Did you? No. no? No, no, we played four hands with the spin stuff. Uh huh, uh huh. I just wondered if you had any. In America, they and when you take piano lessons, every year there's a recital and you're supposed to play. And sometimes yeah, the, and the parents sit there. Yeah. <laughs> no. no, you no. Do, you do that. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, well, at the academy, um, the kids give these recitals, and. Um, when you have these kids recitals, there are always the parents sitting there. And the parents are called the cotton. <laughs> because they stuff the audience. Uh -huh. And when a kid is finished, then the cotton of that kid leaves. <laughs> and so at the very end, you only have the cotton of the last player. <laughs> Sometimes it's true. Wow. So from your childhood, are there some particular um, concerts that you went to that are memorable? Musically? Yeah. Thousand things, sure. Yeah, I mean, anything that, that stands out that, that you have a particular memory of? Uh, sure, at the opera. What were sure. some of your favorite operas? Don Giovanni with Ezio mm -hmm. Pinza. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Figaro. <laughs> Wow. In Salzburg. Mm -hmm. Did you go often to Salzburg? To no, Auburn? we went only twice. Twice. Mm -hmm. With your I family spared, or with uh, With friends? my father. And I, spared, I, I saved my whole pocket money for a whole year for wow. Salzburg. Wow. Wow. Summer festival. Yeah. yeah. And you said that you'd like to have, you would have liked to have been a singer. Yeah. Were there sopranos that, that you particularly admired? I know you um, I know how you admired Itzio Pinza, but <laughs> he's not a soprano. Yeah. No, so. no, no, no. Let me think. For the technique, just for the technique, I didn't like her, but for the for the way she used her voice, Schwarzkopf. Schwarzkopf, yeah. Mm -hmm. How about pianists that you that you admired? I was pianist. Yeah. Oh, lots of them. Schnabel. Mm -hmm. Schnabel. Then, uh, then Isolde Algrim. Yes. And uh, Landowska. Oh wow! And she was a harpsichordist. Yeah. Person. Was she influential in getting you interested in the harpsichord? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. she influenced a lot of people that way. Um, so, um, what kind of um, um, elementary and high school education did you have? Was it a public school that you went to? No, it's called the Humanistic Gymnasium. Everybody goes there. It's uh -huh. a classical DC. Mm -hmm. DC. And uh, that's probably where you learn Latin, right? We yeah. all learn Latin. That's not me. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And did you learn English at school as well? Or? A little bit, but I must say, I picked English up. <laughs> I never learned it. Uh huh. Well, you've done beautifully. <laughs> yes, you know. I suppose during the American occupation, you got a chance to speak English a lot. Not so much. No. no? Not so much. No, we were not too. To. Uh, no. No. I wondered about that. Um, did you write any stories or poetry when you were a kid? Mm. No. Never. No. No. Um, did your parents ever read stories to you? They told us stories. Told they didn't it, yeah. read to uh -huh. us. Uh -huh. Were they stories that they made up? Um, or stories that they had read that they were 
reciting it to you. All kinds of stories. Uh -huh. All kinds of stories, and then of course we had stories where we said who had to come. Yes. <laughs> we could choose the protagonists. And oh, cool. Wow. Your father used to do that yeah. frequently at night, didn't yeah. he? Uh -huh. When you went to bed, we, he told me. We that. choose the stories. Yes, and then he, yeah, would, the, he would make the up. The protagonist. Yes, then he would make up. Oh, we made it, we made it together. Yes, that was wonderful. Sure. Wow. No, wow. we never read. <laughs> While you were in Vienna, um, you must have gone to concerts where music of Schoenberg, Berg, and Webern mm -hmm. was was mm -hmm. um, performed. Um, what was um, was there anything special about hearing that? Um, you know, in in Vienna. Since yeah. Well, I know that once at the Kammerkor with Grossman, we had to do the Zen songs by Webern. I don't know if you know them. Yeah. Yeah. Fiendishly difficult, and uh, they are not rewarding at all. Because what you do when you when you sing Weber, you have, for instance, the octave da, di, di, da, but it is not da, di, it is da, di, yeah. you know. So you Actually, have to orient yourself yeah. around the octave, and the, uh, during two hours he tortured us with us with this, and then he said, okay, and he gave us. The Regina Celli Lettare by Caldara. <laughs> Immediately. We sang like angels. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know it? Yes. This is a Baroque composer who lived in Vienna in the beginning of the 18th century. Beautiful piece, Regina. I don't know that. Uh, wow. So that if you, if you have to live through Webern, you can sing anything, right? And, uh, we, <laughs> we, we felt like, like Baroque angels. Yeah. Not, you know? Baroque angels. You know, it Weber starts Weber. Regina Celli yeah. Letale. Oh, yes. And it was immediately after this. <laughs> <laughs> so, among your fellow musicians and, and teachers, were there, um, what, um, what were people's feelings about um, Weber and Schoenberg and, and, and Berg? Um, were there any you must have heard conversations about oh, yeah. this music. And, uh. Mostly, they were kind of irritated and bored. Uh -huh. And um, our friend Polly, for instance, he says that Schoenberg is a dead end. Uh -huh. And I think I agree. Uh -huh. Because what you do is what he does is to cook up his rules uh -huh. but the rules come afterwards uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's the way it should be yeah you write the music and then the rules yeah then, then the rules somebody figures out what the mm -hmm. style was mm -hmm. but he cooked them up before he wrote he cooked the them up and it's a little do you know i don't know how you say in english there's a certain game which is called temple hoop you jump from one you, you have it with, with chalk, hopscotch. Yeah, hopscotch. Hopscotch. Yes. hopscotch, right? Yeah. And hopscotch was there all the time. All of a sudden there comes a guy and says, I have a new hopscotch. And you have to <laughs> jump in another way. <laughs> you have to jump with legs you don't have. <laughs> yeah, so to speak. Uh -huh. <laughs> but Did you, you must have known people who were like friends, of, or they knew Webern personally, sure. or they even knew Schoenberg, oh, or yeah, Baird. Certainly. Personally, mm -hmm. and they were—they you must have known friends of theirs in other words, yes, or, yes, who, who admired them at least as human beings, or, or maybe I don't know. <laughs> well, I must say, and that we certainly, uh, <laughs> I will certainly deserve all kinds of contempt here. But I must say, I avoided them because they were those always people. there was always terrible discussions. Uh -huh. <laughs> Interesting. Now, Vagrin was supposed to be a good conductor. Um, Could be. Uh, um, you, you, you weren't at any concerts that he was conducting, were you? No. Just no. Grossman, from time to time, he made us sing some of his, his stuff. Yeah. yeah. But, um, <laughs> Did you ever play any of the keyboard music? Of, of no. Keyboard? No. No. That's very interesting. Um, so um, when I move on to your your college education, um, where did you, so you studied at the the Vienna Academy. Um, no, I, I I studied. You mean uh, the lycée? Well, until the maturity. 
Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. oh. And then the academy in Vienna, in the, um, I graduated in, in Habsikot. Uh-huh. And uh, voice, I never did it officially, but I was, I was with Grossman. Wow. So who did you study harpsichord with? Isolde Eichel. Uh-huh. What, um, tell me a little bit about, about um, your, your studies there and repertoire that you worked on and... Mostly Bach. Uh-huh. Mostly Bach and I learned enormously from Isolde, mm -hmm. as I learned also from, from Grossman. Uh -huh. Musically and in, in every way. Because they were all real non-nonsense musicians. Mm -hmm. the, did you play much chamber music oh, there? Oh yeah, yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. Mostly continuum like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in, in cantatas or, or what did you play continuum for? Trio sonatas? Trio sonatas okay. and handle a lot. A handle, you know? interesting. Mm -hmm. And then I played continuum all the time when we, when we sing cantatas. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you do any um, college study here in the, in the United States? Well, I, I did a few courses at, at Catholic University, and I was also assistant to Professor Cordovana at Catholic University, uh -huh. where we did the St. John's Passion and Don Giovanni and all kinds mm -hmm. of things mm -hmm. in Washington. Wow. Um, did you study conducting at all? No. No, no, no. Um, and when you were in college, did you give recitals? Did they... Um, no. Just wondering. No, wait a moment. Oh, I played chamber music. Yeah. Uh -huh. Mostly but, continuo. Uh -huh. But she I didn't play any solo. Solo recital. No. No. Just wondered about that. Did you learn organ by any chance? Never. Never. <laughs> At Catholic University, did you play for cantatas or did yeah. you play continuo? Yeah, I played for cantata, I played continuo. I coached a lot. Coached? That's good. I coached the, Saint, the whole St. John's, wow. uh, John's Passion. And um, the singers and the, the, the singers, the singers and the instrumentalists, and the uh, and festive work. Wonderful! Wow, cantata eighty. Yeah. And did you ever, for example, sit at the keyboard through a whole performance of Don Giovanni or anything? Yeah, like sure. You did. I did Don Giovanni. Mm -hmm. at, as a keyboard player. I did. I did. I accompanied the recitatives. Wonderful. And uh, Wonderful. this was in in Washington. In Washington, I did Don Giovanni. Mm. Had, you hadn't done that in Vienna? No. Okay. Yeah. I did a lot of operas in, in, in America. Washington, yeah. Did Don Pasquale. That's great. Arches in Galatea. Good. Uh, Don yeah. Giovanni. And what else? A couple of others, but... And this was mainly at Catholic Union? Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is a, a big subject, and um, I'm sure that you have, might have a lot to talk about it. Um, the whole um, historical performance practice um, movement in this this country, with um, looking at you know so-called original instruments. Mm -hmm. Do you have any comments about about that movement? I think one has to be very careful not to fall into a certain snobbery. Mm -hmm. That uh, we don't know how these things sounded. That's right. Mm -hmm. And. Sometimes I have the impression there is far more discussion as mu than music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but this is my personal um, opinion, absolutely not as a, as, a, as a scholar. When you first played with um, Baroque violins as opposed to modern uh -huh. violins, what was, your, what was your experience like for that as a harpsichordist? I don't know because I was so concentrated in not making mistakes uh -huh. that I didn't really think too much about the sound of the of the Baroque violinist. Uh -huh. I wanted to be sure that I'm right. Because my experience was, oh, I can hear the harpsichord. <laughs> that was my yeah, experience. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. But uh, I couldn't, for me, I couldn't pay myself the luxury to mm -hmm. listen to the others. I had mm -hmm. to make sure that I didn't make a mistake. Mm -hmm. oh, a related kind of question, what is your feeling about um, playing Bach on the piano versus the harpsichord? That depends on the player. Mm -hmm. You have pianists who play wonderful Bach and you have terrible harpsichordists. Yeah. It depends. Mm. And then there is sometimes with the harpsichordists a certain rigor 
which makes me a little unhappy. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I mean, some pianists who I've talked to who also play harpsichord say that it, there's certain polyphonic lines that just don't come out very well on the harpsichord, and they prefer to do it on the piano, mm -hmm. even though they prefer, in general, to play Baroque music on the harpsichord. Yeah. And um, I don't know if you had an experience like that. So. Or I'm when thinking of like the, um, say the the uh, the Bach Gamba sonatas. Those are really yeah. trios. How do you bring out those lines so they balance with uh, the, the the gambist or the cellist who's playing those? Um, and sometimes those lines get lost. Um, I but like again, them. I like to play them better on the harpsichord uh, on the piano. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I play them very often, mm -hmm. and um, I feel better on the piano with them. Mm -hmm. I've arranged those for string trio, and they actually work very nicely. Sure. Yeah. I am? Yeah. Um, though I did hear a um, an organ perform an organ organist. It was a little. It was a um, a little chamber organ. Mm -hmm. um, and, and he played all the voices. He no played the two voices, uh -huh. and it balanced very nicely mm -hmm. with with the gamba. I forgot who the organist was, but um, it was that was very nice. And just wondered about that. It's that's very interesting. Um, can you tell me about some of your musical friends and colleagues in Austria? Sure. Yeah. Aside from, from Ferdinand Grossman? Yeah. Well, all my colleagues. The, there's Laurence Dutois, for instance, who's a wonderful singer with almost no voice, but uh, Grossman made her the voice. Uh -huh. He made us the voices, you know? And he could... Laurence Dutois... Leopold Marksteiner was a wonderful organist. Uh, Walter Berry, he died yes. uh, half a year ago. Yeah. He was one of ours. Um, and what, was he a singer? Oh, yeah. 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 He, he played the lead role in Wozzeck. He did everything. Yes. He was an amazing singer. Oh, he was wonderful. Oh. And um, well, quite a few. Uh -huh. Were your friends mostly singers, or did you have harpsichordist friends in, in Austria? Instrumentalists, singers, yeah. mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you um, like play piano trios and stuff like that? Who, yes. was, who were some of the violinists and cellists that you played with? Well, uh, Peter Wagner. They are not. They are not very famous. That's okay. They're just good. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of great musicians who weren't her household names. I just wondered if there's mm -hmm. any. Elisabeth Wagner, and uh, they go to Italy every year to teach chamber music uh -huh. to the Italians in Aqua Sparta. Mm -hmm. And, um, they did then, or they still do now? They still do. They still do. They still do, sure. It's wonderful. Wow. And because the Italians are very eager to learn real chamber music. Yeah. And I must say, I think the Italians play wonderful chamber music. It's not true that they can only sing opera. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and um, two years ago I was in Florence, in Orsan Michele, and they played the Fifth Brandenburg. Mm -hmm. Italians. And the girl was dying with fear because of the grains, you can imagine. But they pretty just filled away and it was wonderful. Yeah. There was no construction and no, you know, second entrance theme, etc. Not at all. They just played. Yeah. And that's the way you should be. You should play Bach. With passion. With yeah. passion. Exactly. Did you ever play the Bach at uh, Fifth Brandenburg? I never had the courage. Oh! <laughs> maybe one of these days. <laughs> Well, there's the version with the short Ardenza, too. You know, there's, a, there's an alternative. I played all the, all the Brandon books except the fifth <laughs> because I just got cold feet. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm sure there's lots of people who get cold feet over that piece. Wow. Did you have any favorite, um, or not did, but still, um, favorite um, piano chamber music? Um, you know, piano trios, quartets, quintets, anything that stands out that you particularly liked? Well, a lot. Let's see. Well, the Buzal trio. Uh huh. No, as far as um, repertoire. Oh, repertoire. Well, all the Haydn, all the Mozart, all the Beethoven, mm -hmm. all the. Certainly. Anything that, that stands out in particular that. Yes, the A major trio by Haydn. Yeah. Uh huh. Wow. You know the, the, the finale? Da -da 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 -da. Yes, yeah. Yeah. 
How about the, the G minor piano quartet of Mozart? Do you oh, like yeah, that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. And then the Ungarese and... Uh, yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> wow. Did you... Whoops, somebody's coming here. Hi. Hi. Oh, hello. Cool. I'd love to, but I've got a vocal All right. I um, wanted to ask you, um, what brought you to the, the United States? Um, um, was it musical reasons? No? Marriage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was your husband a, a musician? No. No, no. <laughs> he was a Von Cannon. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's where she became a Von Cannon. I see, yeah. A uh, fun Cannon. <laughs> and let's see, you had two children, is yes. that correct? Yeah. And I've forgotten their names. Uh, well, Susanna and Michael. Michael died. Yeah, yeah. And um, either of them musicians? Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, they played piano and... No, sang, no, no, but they sang. But they sang, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, well, Suzanne is a manager of concert yeah. artists. Oh, she is. Don't you know that? <laughs> no. And she managed uh, many classical people in the past, even the greatest of them all, Yo Yo Ma. Oh. And now she has dedicated herself to a jazz group, the Breuker Collective. Oh. And all oh, kinds those of are, other. Oh, they're great. Yeah, all yes. kinds of other jazz musicians she's managed. And from time to time, she does sing for She sing still for, does. For Yo Yo Five. Yeah, she for still it, does the classical people. Uh -huh. And what's her last name? Susanna von Cannon. Okay, I didn't know if she was married. She and is married. Yeah, she's married, she's but married. For, she? for, the, for the business, she still uses her name. I see. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Wow. That's great. I, di I didn't know that. <laughs> um, and um, when you first came to the United States, where were you living? Uh, in North Carolina. Uh-huh. <laughs> wow. Um, and did you do some teaching there? No. No, no. Um, so when did you go to, to, to Catholic University? Was that after that? Yeah, that was after I went to Catholic University. And... Uh, had a job at Catholic University, and then one day in the New York Times, <laughs> there was an ad from MIT from John Bartrick. No kidding. And I looked at it, and I thought, I'll never get that, not in, but just... Par acquis de conscience, I wrote to John Bartrick, and I got a phone call, come immediately, you're just <laughs> the person we need. My, and um, let's in see, that would have been... That was in 74, and since then... Wow, wow. And when you were hired, what were your initial duties? My duties was 2160. Uh-huh. And... Uh, introduction also, to music, yeah. Also, John Botrick wanted, he was very ambitious, he wanted opera. Yes. And um, since I had quite a bit of practice at Catholic University, yes. see, and there was John Cook. Yes. Remember yeah, John the Cook? The organist, right? And he had a wife. Mm -hmm. And she was like, she, she liked to sing. Susan. Her name Sandra. Was Sandra, that's right. Yeah. Sandra, Sandra Stewart. That's right. And, um, so did you do some opera productions here at, at MIT? Yeah, but then um, they did Orpheus. They did what? Orpheus from Gluck. Oh, yes, Orpheus. of course, yes. And, uh, but I retired from it because I had a car accident. So they did, they did the Orpheus without me. Wow. And then the, the opera production fell into Oh, so you were supposed to sing a, 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 a role in Orpheus? No, no, I was supposed to put, him, put yeah. it on. Yeah, but I see. And then the, the accident Producer, kept director. Producer. Producer. Yeah. Director. yeah, wow. But and, and this, this is off the record, what I say. Okay. You want me to, I can turn the tape recorder off? Turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know right. why. I so know. you taught, it was at Gloucester High School? Yeah, yeah. and I'll tell you why. Because John Bartlett said he can only get me next year. Right. And so for that one year, I was teaching at Gloucester. I see. So there was a year there. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what did you teach at, at Gloucester? Uh, were you the, oh, choir, music. the music. choir director? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this was in the high school? This was in your high wow. school. And wow. I thought, um, I can certainly wait for a year for MIT. Uh -huh. I totally forgot. Thank you. <laughs> wow. But um, as I say, and then there was a lack of organization, and so it was impossible to put on, put on an opera. And then they wanted to do um, the magic flute. And I said, it's totally ridiculous. You'll never find a queen of the night. <laughs> <Yes>. And... Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> Rufus Hallmark yes. wanted to sing Tamino. Oh, yes. And I was very unhappy and they said, you, yes. Yes. we don't have to cover ourselves with the ridicule. It's, no, we can't. Yeah. And oh. then... Uh, he was teaching here at the time. Uh -huh. He was an assistant professor. Yeah, but they were they all had the singing craziness. Yes, I know. And uh, so, whose idea was it to do opera? Was it was it John Buttrick's? I think it was. I think it was John Cook's. John Cook's idea. Sandra's idea. It was Sandra's idea. And uh, so um, that was. I, I was very pleased that I was kind of getting out of this. Yeah. Now, did you do any vocal coaching? Yeah, um, and I did. I did a couple of recitals with with David Brightman. Remember? Oh, you actually Brightman? sang some solo, some song recitals. I yeah. Sing, yeah, I sang a couple of mostly. Yeah. What did you do, Garcia Lorca? No kidding! Mm -hmm. wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow, wow, wow! David Brightman is now a faculty member at Oberlin. He's made some recordings of Beethoven sonatas on, on the forte piano. He's. He's become a very successful pianist. I'm very pleased. Yeah, very, wow. very, he's a very nice person. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Um, did you do um, much um, harpsichord or piano playing it when you were at MIT? Well, I practice. Right now I'm practicing like crazy <laughs> yeah. on, the, on the keyboard. <laughs> but like, were you ever, um, did you ever play chamber music with any of the faculty for with concerts? Rosie. With Rosie. With Rosie. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that later because I, mm -hmm. I heard you two play Bach in the chapel once. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to get to that later. Did you um, ever play piano for the choir? As no. A, no? No. No. Um, and um, so most of your, your performing here at MIT had to do, do with, with vocal music. Um, yeah, I, I play, I, we had two concerts with Susie Larson. Uh huh. And, um, so what did you what did you do with her? Yeah. Uh, Italians, Monteverdi in yeah. 17th century, uh -huh. Zephyr Oh yes, wonderful now, piece. It, uh, you were playing harpsichord, or were you? No, I was singing. You were singing with. And who was the who who who, who played? I think it was David. Could have been David. David. David Brightman and a cellist <laughs> called Phoebe, but I forgot her name. Phoebe. Wow. Yeah. Phoebe Carrari. I'm not sure. She was around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could have been her. Yeah, that name is familiar. Yeah. 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 She's still active. She's still active yeah. around here. Yeah. yeah, we did, we did, you know, um, mm, Carissimi. Yeah. Mm. Those are beautiful pieces. Oh my gosh, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. They did do it. She duets. and Susan Larson are still best friends. That's great. Um, that takes quite a, quite a voice to do that stuff. That's, that's. Well, that Claudia, st Claudia could still sing the beginning to the end of every Mozart opera for you, if you, do, if you, <laughs> if you, if you want to taper one day. So. Wow, wow. Um, you still remember the beginning of Zephyr Torn? Sure. You? Can you sing the beginning? Zephyr, Zephyr, Zephyr Torn. Yeah, wished I could join you. Zephyr, Zephyr Torn. Zephyr Torn. Torn. Zephyr Torn. Wow. Uh, you know west, west wind return, 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 return. It's just wonderful. Ever heard it? Zephyr of Torna? Um, it's been a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's such a oh. great piece. Yeah. I, I, I miss some of that music. I heard a lot of it in college and I, um, I miss. I did a Schutz duet in class today. Oquam tu pulcre es. Oh, oh yeah. no kidding. It's well, I mean, he studied with Monteverdi, and yeah. it's just... Were they yeah. impressed? Oh, they loved it. Good. <laughs> yeah, they better love it. <laughs> wow. Um, so when I spoke to you a few weeks ago, um, you mentioned that you had um, played music with, with Klaus Liebmann, so you obviously knew him. He had retired by the time you came here, yeah, but he uh -huh. was still teaching yes. an occasional course. Um, can you f tell me some of your impressions of him as a as a person? He was great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like he had a sense of humor. Um, sure. You read his writings, and there's a. I never read anything of his writing, but he used to invite Rosie Harvison and me to a Greek restaurant. <laughs> uh huh. And so we had great evenings together. Wow! Wow! What kind of things did you discuss? Anything politics. Politics mostly. mostly. Mm -hmm. Klaus Lippmann said that when he sees somebody driving up at the filling station and asks 
the guy to feel his, his tongue. Yeah. He can say by the way this guy behaves whether he's been a Nazi or not. Wow. And wow. I believe it. Wow. Well, he was certainly profoundly affected by all sure. that. Sure, but that's what, that's what Klaus said. And I said to Rosie, he's right. You could you could say the same thing. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. Wow. wow. Um, now you told me that you played violin and piano sonatas with him. Um, how often did you do that? I don't know. Once every two months. Mm -hmm. Any particular favorite pieces you like doing with him? What do you do? Some Bach. Uh -huh. Some Bach. But we never. We never had the time to really work on it, you see. Uh -huh. It uh -huh. was, uh, what makes me sometimes a little unhappy is when you just play through. I don't yeah. like that, playing yeah. through. Yeah, right. You're one of the few people, in fact, you're the only person I've talked to up to now who actually heard him play. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about him as a violinist. How would you describe his style? And I couldn't. I haven't heard him enough. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Did he have... Uh, Tell me, you must remember his vibrato. Was it a big vibrato? Was it a small vibrato? Did he use it all the time? Or was he kind of... I spirit? don't know. You, you'll know. No, yeah. no, I could I would, I would tell you all kinds of fibs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. She was probably paying attention to her own part. Exactly. Which is what I say when I play the piano. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because I've just, um, just been very, very curious what he was like as, as a violinist. Yeah, I didn't even know he was until just now. Yeah. I didn't know. Um, did you ever play the Brahms sonatas with him? No. No. Um, um, you must have gone through the Mozarts. Yeah. Yeah, but not all, not all of them. He hated Wagner. Yeah. Uh -huh. passion. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> what, um, what music really made him come alive? Mozart. Mozart. Uh-huh. He seemed like he had a wide um, taste in music. And, at least when I read his writings. Um, he you know, we talk mostly about Don Giovanni. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. What, is there anything particular that he um, um, talked about um, Don Giovanni with you? No. No. Everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's <laughs> mm -hmm. inexhaustible, Don Giovanni. Mm -hmm. Wow. Had he ever directed an opera because he directed the choral society and the I orchestra don't here. I don't you know. don't know if he directed no. an opera. He, and he was at Yale before he came mm -hmm. here. Where no. was... Yeah. And um, did he talk about his past life with you before he went to Yale? No, not really. Not really. Okay. Not really. Mm -hmm. You know, Europeans don't like to talk about the war. I'm sure they don't. Yeah. Except Sometimes, but uh, in general, we've hated. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And rightfully so. That's, that's exactly a, you know, right. Yeah. But uh, I had once a very particular experience, um, and that was in Middlebury. I was I I was teaching um, during a summer in Middlebury College, mm -hmm. and f I was uh, responsible for the music in the German school. And there was Gerhard Storz, and Gerhard Storz is a wonderful scholar. He's the pre he was, he's, he stayed later, uh, unfortunately he um, was the president of the German Academy, etc., etc. Fantastic guy. And he had done a couple of conferences. And one day we go to the cafeteria, and we go to the table, and both of us take the chair that has the back against the wall. Oh, wow. And we just looked at each other. <laughs> and this is an instinct from the Nazi time. You want your back protected. Yeah. Uh -huh. And both of us, you know, we had the chair. Uh -huh. <laughs> and you looked at one another yeah. and you knew what yeah. had happened. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you ever sing in a choir under Klaus Liebman's direction? No. No. Um, but you must have um, seen him conduct concerts and oh, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about him as a conductor. What was your... Um, well, I had the impression that he got, he, he got the music out, that's all. Mm -hmm. But I have no particular imp uh, impression on, uh -huh. on, on uh -huh. Klaus Liebman. Mm -hmm. I have a far more human 
um, yeah, remembrance sure. of him. Was he a singer as well? Um, I don't know. Uh -huh. Just wondered if he was a tenor or a bass. And, uh, mm -hmm. This I don't know. Because he did a lot of choral conducting, and I just wondered if he was... Well, singing. anybody who is a decent choral conductor has to know how to produce a voice. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you weren't ever a piano accompanist for him? No. No. Okay. Um, there was a course that he taught here at MIT on the Beethoven string quartets. Did he mm -hmm. ever talk to you about um, about that? No, 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 no. I was terribly busy because at that time it was the 2160. Mm -hmm. And there was old Barry Verko who at the last moment couldn't do his section, you know. So <laughs> I didn't have time. Well, you had to do three things yeah. in music, and then you did Latin besides. Right? Yeah, but the Latin was a totally different proposition. You enjoyed it. it. So, yeah. But it was, but you were doing much more than anybody else. I don't know, but the thing came, the Latin thing was uh, really a kind of a freak, because when I was teaching 2160, I explained the Mass. Uh -huh. Because, of course, you have 1,500 years of music on the same text, so you have right. a fantastic um, comparison possibility. And I said, listen, I'm sick of it. I'm going to have a little seminar Latin for musicians so that they not always have to explain what the ES Irae, etc. is, right? And uh, so we did that, and all of a sudden I get a phone call from Jerry Letwin. <laughs> Can I send you a couple of physicists? <laughs> she sent them. Sure, there came the physicist, and within two weeks, I was sitting there with a full-fledged Latin <laughs> class. I didn't know how, no. and uh, I was a little bit like the like the virgin to the baby, you know. Well, but <laughs> well, what year was that? Oh, that was long ago. Yes. Well, about ten years ago. Uh huh. No, and ten years. It was. It was more than. It was more years. than. It was very long. It was by the time I came here. Oh, yeah. I've been here for twenty-two years. And so it was, was in the 70s. When it was you in started, the 70s, yeah. you're right. And uh, all of a sudden I was sitting here and um, Harold Reich yes. said, well, my dear, we are holding up the humanistic tradition. He was a classicist too. The class. Yeah. And wow. But and I would have you. never, without Jerry Letwin, I would never have ever done. But you weren't brought here to do classics. No. And there you were doing Latin. Here, here I sit. Wow. And it was wonderful. And then you started teaching a formal um, um, four-credit class, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, wow. Now I do it at IEP. Yeah, right. I didn't realize it had gone back that far. My it went goodness. back that far. And wow. wow. And then you were teaching boy students on the side and, oh, yeah. and doing anything. <laughs> and they wanted you to be the opera sure. director as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and did you teach piano here as well? Sure, the piano lab. And then I had a couple of... So you did piano seat. lab too, right. And, and did you have amazing. private um, students as well? I had one. Aha. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And then for a very memorable session, I had once Cynthia. And that <laughs> was she, Did Cynthia take one piano lesson with you? Who was this, Cynthia? No, we don't talk about her no, last no, name. No, 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 First no. name is Cynthia, that's Okay. It. That's <laughs> let that suffice. But you, you taught... The fact that you taught piano lab means that you were doing fundamentals of music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know what that is, yeah. and then you teach piano lab. Besides, mm -hmm. it means you have one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. students, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So that that's, but you know, it, everyone who does O five one now fundamentals like Pam, yeah, or um, anyone else, George Rucker, they mm -hmm. do not have to do piano lab. But uh, I mean, they don't. They just do one thing. Oh, you yeah. were doing oh, yeah, everything. I was, I was a girl for. You were doing the sight singing and the training. Sure. Of, yeah. Wow. Well, I think a, a question that we can um, maybe end with. When you were hired, what did you understand the purpose of the music MIT music program to be, um, as opposed to, and how it was different from other um, you know, music curriculum? And uh, how, how was that explained to you? Um. That's a difficult question, because um, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just accepted it as part of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was very good because uh, the humanities had to have had to have a place in this year institute mm -hmm. because otherwise you get nothing but specialists mm -hmm. and the specialist becomes an idiot. Mm -hmm. Right, right. How, and did, 
How did you find working with MIT students? Uh, were they, did you find working with them to be different from other uh, college students that you'd worked with? Yes and no. But I was very much fighting, and I do it to this day, is their attitude toward music. Because, and I told that my class, when we once were singing under Igor Markiewicz, mm -hmm. and Igor Markiewicz said to us, children, silence is music too. <laughs> and I said, you have to understand that, and we have to start this course by being quiet. To, for five minutes, I don't want to hear anything. I just want you to shut up and be quiet. And you cannot imagine what fidgety and what, what they could not be quiet, you see? And I found that my, when you say, mission in MIT is to teach these students to be quiet. Because they always, when they do their, their homework, they have music coming out of everything. They can not shut up. And the most precious things you can teach them is to shut up. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's what I feel is really my mission here when I teach the mm -hmm. students. Because if you, cannot, if you cannot have silence, then you cannot have music. Absolutely. When you're working with students who aren't being trained to be professional musicians, um, but yet people who are very eager to learn and to become good musicians, mm -hmm. Um, did you find working with students like that different from, from conservatory students? I don't know any American conservatory students, uh -huh. but very different from the academic conservatory students in Vienna. Uh -huh. Very different. Uh -huh. Can you talk about some of the differences? Yeah, the difference is does that the students here have a great difficulty not to hear anything. Mm -hmm. They get panicky when, when there is not something in their ears. Oh, interesting. Uh -huh. Once, at the beginning of a school year, I went and got all the Walkmans, like a stewardess, you know? <laughs> Said, you can have them at the end of the term. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because... <laughs> Did you keep them all turned? Sure. You did? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, there's a famous article by John Herbison about the fact that this was 15 years ago, mm -hmm. 20 years ago, that every student came to his class wearing Walkmans, listening to rock music, and he could hear it, the drums <laughs> coming through. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure. And that um, they would turn it off and take their headphones off during mm -hmm. his one hour or one hour and a half class, and as soon as the class was over, sure. they'd all go back on again. So th there were three hours a week when they took their yeah. headphones off. That was how depressing he thought it was. Sure. It's not that bad anymore. But no, no, yeah. certainly not. It but was there terrible was a time for a while. It, it was, was terrible. It was terrible. And then they, 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 didn't, they didn't listen. And then I told them there is no such thing as classical music. There's only good music and bad music. Yeah, yeah that's what, what Duke Ellington said, too. Yeah, There's two kinds really of good music, good music and bad music. Exactly. And, sure. Yeah. Well, I think this is a good place to, to, um, to yeah. stop. Okay, and, sure. Um, I want to thank you so Most very, welcome. very much. This is great. I don't, know if, I, I don't know if you have gotten anything pertinent out of it. But this has been... Fantastic. Very good. Uh, I, Very good. Uh, you're okay. filling in um, a lot of stuff that's not really known about um, about music at MIT. Mm -hmm. um, well, and, uh, it's only and from my point of view. See? Yeah, that's okay. Um, that's <laughs> so I want to thank you so much. Most welcome.